Give me a shout when you're, when you're doing so. Welcome everyone to the Civi CRM Campfire Chat, March 26th, 2021. Christian, I will hand it over to you. Thanks, Roshani. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Christian, uh, coming to you from the sunny climes of the west of England, um, which is a bit of a rarity, but there we go. It's usually raining here. It's beautiful today. Um, yeah, and I, I oh gosh, I've been using Civi, I think, since 2008 or so. Um, not particularly intensively, but more so lately. Um, and I, uh, I pretty much wrote the integration of Civi with WordPress. Um, in fact, I'm literally out, well, before, before I started speaking, I'm trying to fix the Civi Serum WordPress plugin a bit. It's, um, it's a bit naughty in certain places, so I'm, I'm bashing it into shape. But uh, yeah, so what I, uh, yeah, and I've written a bunch of other plugins that um, help CBCRM work with WordPress. So I thought I'd just show you a few little bits and bobs. Um, Roshani, you warned me that uh, people might not be particularly uh, aware of what, of how Civi integrates with WordPress. So I thought I'd just run through a few real basics. Now this is, this is these are largely plugins I've written. So I've, I've just set up a demo site here that, um, that you can see here. It's, I realized I set this demo site up in 2013. Um, so this particular version of Civi has been upgraded a fair few times, but um, yeah, anyway, so you'll see it's uh, it's an ancient WordPress theme uh, called, funnily enough, 2013. Um, and yeah, so I th here's a front page. Um, it just says, welcome to our site. So for, for me, because I'm logged in, it's that's what it says. Um, if I uh, just take this and start a, a window that's anonymous here. So if I'm, this is me not logged in. Okay, so we've got some text here for, for anonymous users that says, you know, hey, you're not logged in. Um, you know, perhaps you'd like to get access to our amazing exclusive content. And, uh, and that would be wonderful uh, as I'm sure we all want to have happen. So um, I thought the first thing I'd have a little look at is events. Now in Civi, you've got all sorts of events um, that you can create. And people often ask, you know, how do I get events onto my website? So um, here you can see I've got a calendar. This is all using the demo data. If you, if you have the chance to install a a trial version of Civi anywhere. This is the, it, it gives you the option to load sample data. So this is working pretty much with sample data with a few little tweaks here and there. So you'll see I've got a calendar. Um, there's my summer solstice festival day concert. And if I go to the next month, there's a couple of other uh, items in the, uh, in the calendar. Um, I can list those as an event, as a list of events and, um, and of course, it being WordPress, I can add little feature images. So my summer solstice festival day concert has a lovely little unicorn as, uh, as, it, as it should. Uh, so, okay, so this is happening in WordPress, but as you can see with the edit event, I can also edit this event in Civi CRM. So this, uh, so any changes I make to this um, here, uh, you know, Add some extra text. Uh, hello, uh, Zoom fireside chat. Um, and I'll save my event here. And in theory, when I reload my page here, uh, yes, we, get, we get the update in WordPress. Um, so that's quite nice. So, what I'm going to quickly do um, is create a new event. Um, just to show what we can do there. And I'm going to call it, say, oh, I don't know, um, members meeting. Uh, and 
some text in there. Because it's for members, I'm going to make it for registered users only. Um, and I'm going to say it starts mm, tomorrow at 5 p.m. And I'm going to repeat it weekly for uh, I don't know, three weeks, should we say? Um, and that looks about right. We can save a draft of that just to make sure. Oh, and of course, it's not a workshop, it's a meeting. Um, and I'm going to sync this event with CVCRM. I'm not going to enable online registration because it's, it's a bit um, complicated otherwise. But uh, now, when we go back to our uh, calendar, we should see some events in here. There's the members' meeting starting today. And um, oh, I must have messed up the. Uh, Repeating event. Oh well. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Let me see what I've done. Oh dear. Um, repetition. Let's try again. Sure, it could be, could be every week on a Friday. Oh, I did it every three weeks. No. Let's see if I've. I feel like I've done that properly this time. It always goes wrong in demos, doesn't it? It always, always does. Hey ho. Yeah, okay. My repeating events are not, not functioning. I apologize for that. Don't know what's happened. But anyway, so we've got our uh, we've got our meeting here. At, at present, it's just a members meeting. So if uh, if I now go to this calendar not logged in. In theory, I shouldn't see this. And indeed, I don't. There we go. The, no, the member meeting is not there. So, yeah, so there we go. So, all these events are in Sydney CRM and they're in WordPress. And you basically just sync between them, uh, depending on, you know, so you can do all your uh, analysis of this meeting and participants and all the rest of it um, in. Civi, but you can display something nice on the front end. So if I want to edit the event in WordPress, I simply click there and you know, I can add a, add a feature image of some sort. Should we? I don't know. Nice picture like that. Christian, there's a question um, about what type of WordPress events plugin you're using, and does it work with WordPress multi site and Civi multi site? Um, well, Civi multi-site, I tend to call Civi multi-domain because it's not technically multi-site. Um, Civi internally in the code calls it, calls it multi, it calls it a domain. Um, so I tend to stick to that distinction because then otherwise you get really confused between multi-site in Civi CRM and multi-site in WordPress. Um, now, Civi CRM presently has no distinction uh, Cannot assign events to a domain. So if you if you create a domain if you create an event in Civi, it's it's spread across all domains. So you can't really segment events in Civi CRM that way at present. So um, so no is the answer. You, the the WordPress plugin yes you can install that on as many subsites as you wish um, and so on and so forth. But I think that's a somewhat complicated question um, that, that probably deserves there, a, um, a talk in its own right. Uh, sorry, is there a specific WordPress events plugin you're using here? Yes, this is, uh, this is called uh, Event Organizer. Um, and it's, uh, it's pretty good. I really like it. Um, it's not the most popular one. But uh, Stephen Harris, who wrote it, is, a, is, is pretty responsive. Um, it does a lot more out of the box than any of the others. So if you want repeating events in um, the events calendar, for example, you have to buy the, um, the paid version. In this, you don't, uh, although it would seem to be broken um, just a second ago. Um, but normally, yeah, normally it doesn't. There are a few add-ons to it if you if you want. But as you can see, I've also written. So I've written a, 
a plugin called Civicium Event Organizer, which is on uh, which is on GitHub, uh, and that allows you to synchronize events between this plugin here and uh, and CVCRM. Um, so I realize we're not we haven't got a ton of time, so I'm just going to whip through a couple of other things here quickly. Um, so uh, Christian, the other question was the read access part of WordPress. Is it WordPress by default or is it Civi CRM or is that another plugin where you were showing us that you had to be, if you're not logged in, you didn't see that? I'm coming up to that. So what I'm going Thank to you. show you next is uh, a plugin called um, Civi CRM WordPress Member Sync, um, which you can find in the WordPress plugin rep repository. And this is for situations where you want your CVCRM members to have WordPress users. So like my front page said, if you, um, you know, if you want to access member only content in WordPress, um, then you can do that that way. So this uses a plugin called Groups, which again is on the WordPress uh, plugin directory, which is really good. And that's what provides the little box in the top right that gave me some options as to who I was allow allowing to see various things. So for example, here, because I'm logged in as, uh, as super admin, you know, I, I've got all the, here's my blog, um, and I've got posts here for registered users only, for lifetime members only, for general members only, for students only. Uh, and then I've got other things like, um, my dashboards and things like that, all these things inserted via shortcodes. Um, now we'll see in a second what happens when, uh, uh, so I should say, if I go to this in my anonymous window, um, I won't see any of those. So you can see the blog doesn't show me those, uh, those posts because I'm an anonymous user. So if I, um, Go to my blog and show you a particular post here. So lifetime only members, we'll see in this, I will, the groups plugin inserts this meta box here. And I've said, okay, only lifetime members can read this particular post and they've got to be in that group. So in CVCRM, what I do is I go to member sync, which is the plugin for synchronizing this. In, in my case, I'm going to choose capabilities because I don't really want to give my users roles. I want the roles to be independent of their membership. So I might want to promote a user to being a, a, an author or an editor, depending, you know, depending on, on you know, who they are and how much I trust them with the website. Um, so I'm gonna use capabilities and I've, I've set up some association rules here. Uh, so for general members, I've got my new current and grace and they become members in the groups, groups uh, of registered because, registered for any user essentially of the website. And then general is a specific group that they're a member of if they're a current member. They go into a lapsed group when they're not, no longer a member or their membership expires or whatever. And the same for students and lifetime. And each of these is quite straightforward to configure. You know, it just has a little thing here and then there's a drop down which allows you to assign the groups. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead. I've got a whole bunch of members in Civi. Um, I'll go to my membership dashboard. You'll see that there's a whole, a whole bunch of them. Um, Christian, we have about 10 minutes. So okay. I'm gonna uh, see if anyone has any questions that they want to ask, they can unmute themselves. And then um, if not, we can continue with the demo. Anyone okay. have any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself. Yes, I can't see any of you at this stage, so no. <laughs> Hi, it's Alison here. Um, so I work for a small nonprofit um, and we do careers events for kids in schools. Um, so we have sort of two types of members, if you like. We have, when we're advertising events on our volunteer portal, as we call it, we're advertising them because we want volunteers from the business community to volunteer at our, one of our school events and go in and talk to the kids about their career their careers and how they got there. So that's kind of one group of 
members, if you like. But we'd also like the possibility to be able to um, put events on our website that anyone can join. So if we want to do, I don't know, an interview techniques course and members of the public can sign up for it, we want, to, we want them to be able to do that. At the moment, the way our system is configured, we can't do both. So I was just wondering if it is possible and if it's just something wrong with our configuration of CIVI. It sounds to me like you need two membership types or okay. you know, multiple membership types. So in this instance, I'm using the demo data, which has general student and lifetime members. But, you know, you can configure a membership um, that, that, that is separate from your general membership that is specific to that particular, uh, that particular need. And then you reveal those bits of the website to those particular members. Okie dokie. So, and then when they sign up, do they go, when they sign up for one of those events, um, that their type of membership will be shown within the event who is signing up? That would depend on how you configure Civi and, I mean, you, they wouldn't, you know, if you configure it the way I'm suggesting, then you wouldn't see those events unless you were that kind of member. Okay. Yep, no, that sounds good. I mean, that's yeah, it's, that's that's a fairly complicated um, scenario. I mean, you know, I, I'm I'm trying to demo some very high level stuff here rather than nitty gritty. Yeah, no, so, I appreciate you know, that. No, that's really helpful. Thank you. I, su I suspect that what you need is multiple membership types so that you have that you can then separate out in WordPress uh, depending on that membership type. So I'm going to just show you uh, i'm going to do a dry run here um oh, oh. Back. Oh, it wasn't okay so I'm, I'm going to do a dry run and see which users which contacts are going to be synchronized to wordpress there they all are uh, and then now i'm going to not do the dry run i'm going to do the actual synchronization and it seems to have finished so let's have a look at our users and we should have more than just a few users um yes indeed we've got a whole bunch of them now but all those CVC own contacts are now uh, users in WordPress. And well, let's take one of them, shall we? Here's um, Brittany Jones, who's a subscriber and she's, she's in the students group. So if I now switch to being her in WordPress um, and I go to the homepage of the website, it'll say, hi, you're a student member. You, so you can see this. And when I go to the blog, um, she's registered, so she can see the content that's for all registered members. But she also sees the students only content. Um, so that way, the membership determines what you see on the front end of the website. Um, okay. that make, Alison, does that make a bit more sense in terms of work of, of memberships giving granting access to parts of the website? Yeah. And are there and those, forms that people would sorry. use to become a member? And would that be done through Civi or WordPress for forms? That can be done through, um, through well, Civi in WordPress. So here, if I, if I show you a post here, um, let's go to our blog, shall we? I think there's a, um, a membership sign up and renewal here. So I go here and I, here's my membership and sign up and renewal and it would tell you um, what it would give you an option of what kind of membership you're signing up for. In this case it's simply a yeah there's one at one price with one price set and another with another price set you pay right. your membership. So yeah this then, is a civi form this isn't like gravity forms or some other no, no, this, form. is, this is a civi form I can configure it in in civi CRM here it is it's the um, it's a contribution page, um, as you can see here, and uh, I've just embedded it using, um, using, I'm showing it to you in this, this URL here, which is the form in the front end of WordPress. Got it. Thank you. Any other final questions? We have four minutes for the WordPress demo. <coughs> Any other final thoughts you want to share, Christian, in terms of maybe any limitations of WordPress that you've run across or 
things that um, you really like the most? Being a coder, I, I don't, I don't have, I, you know, if I can't do something, I code it. But for for people who aren't able to, um, yeah, then then I can imagine there's there's issues. I mean, I, it's hard to say. I mean, there's always going to be gaps in the integration. Um, because there are only so many man hours or person hours, I suppose. Um, you know, this is this is great. What is this using the directory? It's How another little plugin I wrote with, um, that gives you a, a, just a map of you know. So these these people are in my newsletters newsletter subscribe subscriber group in CBCRM, and you know it can put, it puts them in on a map, and I can filter the map by. My location and and then I can do a profile. So you know it's a kind of directory type plugin. Uh, then there's a very sophisticated new plugin which is coming out very next week, or, or which gives you this possibility of having. Um, this is my this is my uh, list of staff. Um, however, they also happen to be posts in WordPress. Oh, this is great, Christian. Uh, but they're also um, they're also uh, contacts. This is using advanced custom fields and an integration with advanced custom fields. You can see that even the even the post um, even the image in the ACF field translates to CV CRM as the as the contact image. Um, so I can view or edit the employee and and then I in in CV CRM, I can uh, in, in WordPress, I can simply there's there's him in his single state, and or, yeah. So when you have a new staff member, you add them, you add them in CV CRM. They automatically show up in uh, on the page here. Um, yeah, the, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the the integration, I suppose, is only limited by people's imagination, and and in the end, anything that people can imagine can be coded. I think that's probably the, the bottom line. Um, I'd love to show you in, in more depth each how each of these plugins works, but clearly my timing is rubbish and I, I anticipated being able to do far more than I was able to. Well, um, we can schedule a follow up for just on WordPress at some point. But thank you so much for sharing this with us. This is amazing to see everything that you can do with um, Sibi and WordPress. Um, Karen, I'm going to hand it over to you. All right, thank you. I'm going to try and share my screen. Do I have permissions? You should do. I'm yes, stopped. you should. Oh, something happened. Oh, too many screens. I think I want to do this one. OK, which one are you seeing? I'm seeing something with slides? Good. Excellent. I'm just going to share it like this. If I go play PowerPoint, it actually takes over my entire other monitors as well, and I can't see uh, my own notes. OK, um, thank you, Christian, for everything you do on integrations. Uh, you do WordPress. I do Drupal. Um, I think, and that's just because that's what I know. I don't know much about WordPress. Um, I think the fact that CV CRM works with a CMS is actually one of its major assets. I think that's an opportunity for a community around um, CVCRM core to, to use familiar tools to them, to not just integrate with it, but to extract and enhance and explore. And like I said, I do Webform CVCRM module, you do WordPress, but I'm, I'm very keen on integration in general, and I'm going to actually kick starting. I'm actually kick starting a project, CVCRM.io, which is going to feature everything there is to know about integration with CVCRM, with every single CMS, all the opportunities out there. Because I think that's how we can grow our CVCRM community. None of us went to CVCRM school. Um, it doesn't exist. So welcome to everyone who's new. Um, and, and but a lot of us already know about you know CMSs, and and it's good to know and have a pathway into a community that way. Um, 
If you haven't seen my three minute and 40 second video, please do have a look at it. It showcases what it is that we can currently do with Drupal 8 and 9. And it has some hidden gems and different pieces that are absolutely unique to the, the core web form module in Drupal 8. <clears throat> this is one slide showing where, where I'm from. I was born and raised in the Netherlands and that, that picture is wrong. It rains all the time. There is no blue sky. Um, then I moved to Canada. I came here in 1992 and I'm a biomechanist by training. I am a, um, I'm a specialist in musculoskeletal modeling and movement and physics, math, that was my thing and coding solutions for it. I had to code in order to make my projects work and that's how I learned how to code. Um, those of you who are older, like my generation will recognize this young fellow on the bottom right here, that that's David Beckham. And my claim to fame is that I coded his soccer boots. I designed the models and simulations to optimize a shoe design for Adidas, for the Predator shoe, for him to kick um, and with as most power as possible. Of course, he missed the first penalty kick against France when he, when he used the boots, but hey, that wasn't on me. Um, that was 12 years ago. And 12 years ago, uh, one of my uh, one of my friends who was leading a nonprofit in Canada came to me and said, Karen, we've paid $30,000 and we still don't have a membership button. You know about computers. Can you help us out? So this is when I first learned about CV Serum and they were using Drupal and CV Serum. So I learned about it. I helped them out and I started working um, with Alan Dixon back in, yeah, that, that was 12 years ago. Um, and right now my team is, is a team of people. We do a lot of work with Semper IT. We've grown to over 50 clients. Um, and I have a lot of people that help me out, whether it's with the extensions, the CVCRM native extensions that we support, whether it's with specific tools like Webform CVCRM module, um, or whether it's site building um, for clients. So the main module that I wanted to talk to you about today is the Webform CVCRM integration. It was uh, written by Coleman of the core team. Um, it must have been 15 years ago, because when I first met Coleman, he was doing um, a training session uh, with Michael McAndrew back at Berkeley. Um, Coleman, yeah, I showed him some of the stuff I was doing with Webforms, and he's like, oh, that's really cool. And that's the first time. That must have been 12 years ago that I first started using it. So I've been using it as a Drupal 7 user. And when we got to Drupal 8 and 9, the Drupal 8 9 web form code itself in Drupal core has been heavily rewritten. And it was a major project to port web form CVCRM integration from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. So I was very keen on funding it. I was committed and I gauged the community and asked for sponsorship to see the level of interest. Um, and these are all the partners, CVCRM partners and user organizations thus far that, and actually there's more that I still have to add that have recently committed um, that have sponsored features. And I've more than doubled any of their financial contributions because I'm committed in doing this, but it's nice to know when you're writing a piece of code, when you're developing an integration that the community is very engaged and is supporting it as well. So why is Webform CV Serum? Um, this slide I put together to explain to you how I look at Webform CV Serum module. Um, <clears throat> so I'm a data scientist by, by nature. And what I look at when I see CV Serum, I see a, a secure place to store data. And there's a lot of data and it's neatly organized in little buckets, right? There's activities, there's contacts, there's addresses, there's emails, it's all organized. And what I can do with a web form CVCRM integration is I can take out one of those little buckets, like a contact, and I can add an event registration and a payment and push those back into the CVCRM core data hub. And I can also add new blocks and push those carefully in the design spots in the CVCRM data hub. Um, very important piece for me here is that I can do this and let people interact with CVCRM data without giving them access to CVCRM itself. So for, for some projects that becomes critical because we don't need everyone in the CVCRM kitchen itself. 
The other piece we have is CVCRM entity. And CVCRM entity works similar. We can take a piece out of CVCRM, a piece of data, and we can render it, for instance, on a Drupal calendar. Um, in this particular uh, slide, I also have some color coding on the different activity types. We, we've put in some, some time and investment on CVCRM entity as well, because our clients will typically use both. We need to manipulate data in CVCRM and we need to visualize data. We can now also manipulate data with CVCRM entity and our recent integration will let you drag and drop activities and change their duration and it will save the brick back into CVCRM as well. So these integrations are, are critical to us. Um, so Semper IT is primarily responsible for Webform CVCRM module. Um, <clears throat> the state now is we have a beta six. Um, I, I've been a bit hesitant to actually call it a full version, but it really is. Um, even Drupal 8 modules is promoting the module right now when I issue a new beta. I think they think it's ready to go. It has over 200 sites. And in total, we have uh, 3,200 people using Webform CVCRM integration. It has a large user base. The key feature and difference with Drupal 7 is that we have uh, invested time and, and funding to create an extensive library of automated functional testing. So that if, and I'm gonna show you that a little bit in, in just one second, how that works and why it is important. On the CVCRM entity side, we have, um, there, we have a beta two release at the moment. It's fully functional for Drupal eight and nine. We're using it on all our Drupal eight and nine projects. In total, there's 102 sites using it and there's still a significant user base in Drupal seven as well. Uh, Square is a CVCRM partner, primarily responsible for CVCRM entity. And I've got uh, David Snowpack here, my drop wizard. I've grayed him out a bit because unfortunately David had to take a step back from the CVCRM community for a bit, but uh, I'm keeping him on this slide because I, I told him he can come back anytime and, and I'm hoping he'll do that in future because he's an absolute genius when it comes to uh, Drupal itself. He's on the Drupal security team among many other things. And he's also um, one of the folks supporting long-term integrations like Drupal 6. He's still supporting Drupal 6. Um, okay, so let's go to look at this testing because it is one of our highlights for the last from the last six months. Every single code added is going into an automated testing protocol and is tested on a variety of versions of Drupal 8 and Drupal 9 with a variety of combinations of CVCRM versions from the extended security release, ESR, to 536, which is the current RC. Um, right now, hopefully everyone is close to 535 here um, or on ESR, but we're testing what's ahead of us. And every single code edit now goes through about 60, 70 specific tests to see if we can still save that activity, if we can still add a note, if we can still make a payment, if we can still, et cetera. These are all functional tests. Um, I've got a, a picture of Matt here. This is Matt Glamen. Matt is an absolute wizard. Uh, he's a young fellow, lives in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And he, when he told me that he was available for work and when he asked me if I had any fun stuff to do, he said, I said, absolutely, Matt, whatever you, you want to do. He's like, do you need any testing? I'm like, yeah, I need testing. And I would like functional testing. So he helped block this in for me, showed me how to use it. And then we took off with it. Um, I showed Jitendra how to use it. He took off with it. Now we've got a very extensive uh, test uh, infrastructure. And this actually is a screenshot of a test. These are functional tests and you can take pictures as the test is going. It's absolutely critical to us that we can actually in a test simulate what people are gonna be encountering when they click through buttons in their web form CVCRM once we issue a new release. So here's the specific piece of code that says, click link advanced. And there's the screenshot that says, yeah, look, I hit that link advanced. And then what we need to do is we need to find, click on this field set, and then we can put a default value in, and then we can say press button save. 
That's how readable these functional tests are. What we're doing here is we're integrating Drupal test infrastructure with CiviCRM APIs because we're making a form in code, we're testing it, and then after we submit the form, we're going to go and call the CiviCRM API to check if the contact we submitted is actually saved properly. Did the membership get saved? What was the type? What was the duration? How much money was paid? What is the transaction ID? What is the invoice ID? Were there sales taxes? Like all these functional tests kick in and every single piece of code added from now on will go through all these tests to make sure that nothing, you know, people have good intentions, they fix something, but it can easily break another piece of code. Now, why do we invest a lot of time and money into these pieces is because all our clients are using it. And some of our clients are, are large clients. Um, one of them is the Alex Community Health Center here in Calgary. Uh, over 400 employees supporting tens of thousands of clients uh, on a variety of health services. They use over 60 web forms in combination with, I'm going to say, a dozen views. And of the 400 employees, there's only five of them who have full access to CV Serum. Everyone else, caseworkers, physicians, nurses, psychiatrists, social workers, they all work and engage with bits of CiviCRM at a time through web forms and views. Um, other examples, we, we use these techniques to do volunteer portals. Um, this one is for Canadian Mental Health Association here in Calgary. Another, you, you recognize these are CiviCRM entities that get together pulled out of the database so volunteers can log in and see their hours, see their total minutes volunteered, update their profile, which goes to a web form, which will update them in the CiviCRM database. So they have a little bit of access to their own, to their own profile. Um, another one of our large projects is the British Columbia New Democratic Party. They're the governing party in BC, in the province of BC. Um, they use 95% core CiviCRM. 95%, but there's this one task that they need us for every couple of years. Um, we do their support for their CiviCRM as well, but the web form task they need every two to three years is for their convention registration so that a president of a constituency can go in and nominate their delegates and can then also sponsor them. And then these all convert and get placed into CiviCRM registrations that are pending, that have partial payments, already submitted by their constituencies, we can then get the delegates to complete their registration and pay the balance. So we do, we do one web form project for them every two to three years. Um, in addition to large organizations, here's an example of a provincial sports organization. This is the Alberta Whitewater Association. And I love this photo, it's my favorite. It looks like it's like a mass start of some sort of event and everyone's trying to go somewhere. Um, we just launched this site on Monday, actually. This, um, this is what Drupal 8 and 9 looks like. Um, this particularly is a Drupal 8. Uh, we could have probably bumped them straight to 9, but we started them about a month too early for me to be 100% comfortable with that. This is one web form. It takes in arguments. So there's a membership ID that will let you sell any of 12 different memberships with different clubs, but it's only one web form. And it takes a financial type argument so that all these different monies can land in the right buckets in CiviCRM. Um, we are gathering adults and up to three children on one form. We're storing electronic signatures for waivers. Um, none of this is custom code. This is all 100% web form CiviCRM. Okay, and then I want to do some live demoing as well. And when the, the schedule and the invite went out, um, uh, Craig put in a request to do, how would you go about uh, using CiviCRM for a vaccination, vaccination registration drive? Um, and he said, you know, AstraZeneca, two doses, appointment bookings, need to automatically schedule that second appointment. They're going to do it 12 weeks out. Um, there's location and multiple contacts. Those, those were the questions and, and the requirements that were 
that were put out in the email. Um, I first thought I'll just build it live, but that is going to take me longer than 20 minutes, um, especially when when I was asked to also do a little bit of an introduction in the background. So what I did was I, I put an hour in last night to put together what I have so far. I've not used any custom code so far. Um, I always do that in my first prototype pass. I want to see how far we can get and identify any missing gaps in functionality. So um, I'm going to switch over to the live demo. Um, what I'll try to show you is, is my process. How do I go about taking that information that Craig provided and how do I map that into a CiviCRM web form solution? Um, and then I'm going to do some prototyping. I'm going to identify and park issues that I come across and I'm going to explore some workarounds and I had to explore a workaround last night and I'm going to show you that. Um, and then there'll be a to-do list. There usually is a to-do list at the end. There's always something else that you would like to do afterwards. Okay, so I'm gonna move this one out of the way and let's go pull in one of my sites here. Okay, this here is, let's just start the front. This here is, is web form hyphen cvcrm.io and it's my little hub for web form cvcrm you'll always find links to the latest resources um the code on github the project page on drupal we've got documentation it's not extensive um but there's definitely enough there to get you started and we will also monitor um cvcrm stack exchange and and we answer a lot of questions on cvcrm stack exchange as well um, so what did I do for the vaccination problem? So the first thing I did was I mapped appointments and bookings into activities. They definitely are activities. And I am, um, I solve a lot of problems with activities and I love activities. They have a start date and they have a duration. You can add custom fields to them. Um, they're really, really neat little entities, right? And you can group them together, um, call it a case, um, but the core are the activities. So I made three new activities, uh, a first appointment, a second appointment, and an, an opening or like a booking slot. I guess we could call it a booking slot. And then what I did was I, I'm gonna go and find, I made some clinic. So I made the North, let me just go clinic. Let's see, I made a North Clinic, here it is. And the North Clinic already has quite a few activities scheduled. Um, it has an appointment scheduled. Okay, so because I put in some test data already. Um, I'm gonna go and open up more spots. So we got another batch of vaccine, we're gonna add more spots. So here's an opening, here's a, a spot we can book. Gonna assign it to the North Clinic. Um, Location was one of the questions asked. I, there is a field on activity that is a type in field. So what I did was I made a custom field because I, I like structuring data. Everything that I do goes back to structuring data. So um, let's see, it was only during weekdays booking. So I don't think we have any bookings yet for, let's go in and add some, a bunch of activities starting at 10, 10 in the morning. Maybe an appointment is 20 minutes, right? Because you got to get your vaccine. You got to wait 15 minutes to make sure there's no allergic reactions. And here's that custom field I made just in CiviCRM custom fields here. You can make one on activity. And I said, well, we'll have a north and a south location. This is going to be a repeat. We're going to have those time slots available during the day. And we're going to do it for, I don't know, CVCRM lets you make 30 of them at a time. So we'll just make the full 30. Um, let's go and hit save on that. So we're going to schedule a whole bunch of slots for bookings. Yeah, this looks good. I'm going to hit continue. And we just scheduled a bunch of activities. All right. Karen, we have about uh, nine minutes left. I know that some people might be able to stay a little bit later, 
but I did want to give people a chance to ask questions to you as well. Um, yep. So if Let anybody wants to jump, jump in and then ask any questions, yeah. feel free to do that. Otherwise, Karen, you can continue. So anyone have yeah. any burning questions for Karen? Absolutely. And Craig, let us know if this is this is what you were looking for <laughs> since you submitted the question. Okay, so here's all the activities that I just scheduled to 10, 10, 1, right? So what if I want to book it now? So what I do is I, I've got them displayed on a calendar. I can hit a booking and I can schedule myself. I haven't been vaccinated yet. I think Canada is going to be at the back of the line here. We have no manufacturing at all here. So we're going to have, oh, let me type in my year of birth and I'm going to go. And all these fields that we're seeing here are going to be stored in, in CVCRM, right? We're creating all those little buckets and, and we're going to create all space for all these, all these little data pieces. Uh, things you can do with Drupal 8 web form is you can automatically calculate things on the fly. It does not require extra modules. So here's the vaccination appointment that we pulled in that we're booking because that's the one we clicked. And then what I did was I calculated the next one, uh, which is going to be June 25th, apparently. And of course, this I'm, I'm putting it at the same time. So after submitting that, what we'll see now is that I have now booked this one. And what it did is it changed it from a booking to a first appointment. So if we look at the calendar, you can see there were some other bookings already that I did yesterday as a test. So what we can do is we could then go and have different calendars where only the gray ones, only those activity types are showing to people booking the vaccination. Other users, administrative users, would be able to see everything to get an overview of where the booking is and how many open spots are left. Um, that is, in a nutshell, what I wanted to show you. Um, and that they get saved in CVCRM, of course, is a big piece of that. This is my other alias. And there's the whole family. Um, I think I am this one today. Okay. And there Feel is- Feel free to ask your question that you have if you want to unmute yourself. Oh, yeah, please do. I can't see the chat. Uh, hi, Karen, it's Joe McLaughlin. Uh, thanks for doing this so much. And thanks for all your help over the last years with web form stuff in particular for me. Um, and uh, yeah, I love web form, it's a great tool. I've not yet mastered all the possibilities with it, um, not yet on Drupal 8 or 9. Uh, the one uh, thing you were showing us about the for the BC uh, New Democratic Party NDP convention, uh, and I think I saw you had like uh, a way to do like multiple discount codes. So I think it's a great example of what can be done with web form. I'd love to learn more about that in particular. I was trying to do that a very similar thing about four years ago. My last full-time gig, we had a, you know, my organization had a also, an annual convention, they, they gave various discount codes to folks based on um, if they qualified and uh, end up always doing it in event, right? Because we couldn't figure out how to do it in the city, or I couldn't figure out how to do it in the city, put it that way. So I think what you've done for the BCNDP, God bless, is um, really similar and also got a great example of what could be done with web form and CBCRM, and I guess probably also city uh, entity as well, I'm guessing. So, nope, no, no entity you. there. That is no, just, a 100% okay. web form CVCRM solution and Great. a lot of CVCRM native solution as well, right? So you make use of partial event register, partial payments and things like that and making use of wait list and pending approval and those workflows. Um, yeah, yeah. When that comes up again, I'd be happy to share you more details, Jim. Yeah, and, and actually, I, I think it's actually a very common use case that many organizations have and whether they, how they're doing it, whether they're doing it with Civi, other like partners who are on this call have probably have, may have clients with the same need and, uh, and maybe doing it a different way for them than you're doing with for BCNDP. But uh, um, that looks really um, like fabulous. And yeah, 
Eventbrite's pretty pretty darn popular for all event stuff, right? And we can do a lot of what it does. Uh, so I'm happy to I'm happy to kick in a couple of bucks to support that towards the NDP or you or whoever. Let, let me know where to do that. So, so thanks. Great. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, and it um, Karen, there's another question here about from Craig. Can you go over the section where you auto book for the second vaccine? Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's my favorite. That's the computed twig. Let's go back to my. And Christian is saying that he's jealous. <laughs> he said that web form is really comprehensive. He wishes there was a single go-to form builder in WordPress. Christian, uh, you said if you can imagine it, someone can build it. So maybe it's possible and coming in the future. I think part of the problem is that so many people have imagined it that, that everybody's um, attention <laughs> is divided between a dozen different form builder plugins. Yeah. The the web form module that we write our integration on is used by 500,000 organizations, right? Like it's pretty solid. All the YMCAs across North America are using this exact same module to do their event registrations. They don't use CVCRM with it, but, but the module itself is really solid, right? So I felt really comfortable making that, making that investment and, and getting that done. If I look at the automated scheduling, the trick here is that we have, we can put two activities on the form. And here is the first vaccination. So that one is populated with what comes from the view. And then the second vaccination is calculated. And if you look at this, this was something I would need code for in Drupal 7. In Drupal 8, I don't. All I need to do is say, I take the first activity date and time, and this is twig, I, which is completely readable. I date modify it plus 12 weeks. And that is what I needed to do um, in order to get it 12 weeks in advance. And then the time, well, the time was even easier because I basically just had to say, I need to do it. I want to do it at the exact same time as the first activity because that will be exactly 12 weeks. Now, however, though, for those paying attention, um, it didn't actually work. I didn't actually save the activity on this particular date. So I've now identified, right? I've prototyped it. I've identified what didn't work. And my workaround was to install CV rules and try and add a second event a second activity after the first one here was added. And I couldn't get CV rules to work on Drupal 8. So I really need to go and look into this now. There's always something you identify when you put all these bricks together that doesn't quite work. So I really need to look into CV rules because that's also one of my favorite go-tos to do some manipulation afterwards. Um, but it didn't actually work. So this date format here didn't actually store properly. Um, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to go then to my code side and I'm actually going to so go I, and get Karen, that I, I do want to um, just, sorry to interrupt, um, mention no that we are at time at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I, I do want to give people a chance to um, share any last thoughts or questions that they have if they have to leave. And then we can continue for a few more minutes afterwards for... Mm -hmm. Uh, some people that want to stick around. I just want to thank um, both Christian and Karen for demoing today. This was super helpful. And I look forward to continuing our conversation and sharing not just Civi information, but also recipes and things we're watching with everyone in the community. So let's uh, continue this that we'll do the next uh, campfire chat in April also this last Friday of the month at the same time. So be on the lookout for that. And does anybody have any final thoughts or announcements of any upcoming events that they wanna share? I know William, you're gonna be organizing something in April, if you're still around, if you wanna mention that. Hi, yes, I'm, I'm still here. Um, there's, I, I can't remember the date you've caught me on the, the hop here, but um, I've got the, the regular 
Northeast of England user group meeting, which has now gone global. So anybody's welcome to attend that. The details are on the CVCRM website. On the 19th. Awesome. And Neil, thank you so much for sharing the link to all the events. And Catherine, you shared the, the link to the DrupalCon nonprofit summit on April 27th. That's awesome. So we'll share all of the meeting notes with everyone. Look out for the, the blog posts as well um, and, and the April event. So thank you guys so much. For people who want to stick around, let's continue with the Karen, I don't know how, how much more time you have, but we can maybe stick around for 10 more minutes. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I have a meeting at 12, which is in 28 minutes for me here. So yeah, I'm happy to answer any further questions. If, oh, I see William asked me, how does it compare with native? Um, that's a tough answer. Um, I mean, I, there, there is a truckload of things that I can do right now with Drupal 8 and 9 web form CV CRM integration that I cannot do with um, CV CRM app form. So I, I, it's not even close to for us to consider that as a solution. As I mentioned in the very beginning, I, I think the integration actually is a key thing. We've got half a million users for Drupal web form module, right? That's a robust solution to then write the integration for, right? So um, I, I do support the core team's efforts to make native forms. And yes, I'm, they're gonna be, my clients are gonna be using them. They still use forms within CVCRM, but I just can't do what my clients need done um, with, with core CV, right? I need these extensions to actually make the workflows possible. Um, yes. Oh, and there's Craig. Craig, yeah, the family appointments. I, I didn't get to that. That was on the to-do list. But let me show you a little bit more about the Alberta Whitewaters, um, their club registration. We can just go, here's that mass start in kayak or whatever this is. But go to the family registration. This is our family web form. So the way you do that in, in web form CVCRM is you can put multiple CVCRM contacts on a form. So in this case, I have one adult member and I put three children on the form. And for each contact, we can decide what we need on the form, their interest, their experience, an image release, we need an email. And then this is the key part, we can define the relationship. So when we add uh, the data to the form, we bundle it up together and we store it in CVCRM. We store up to four contacts with all their relationships and their payment and their membership to their dad and then the inherited membership to their children, right? So um, that's, that's how we do it. Um, so the form itself, um, it, yeah, it takes the parameters so we know what club to render. And then the form itself has conditionals. So let me just actually show it to you because it'll be easier to see. I guess, I guess we're at Kerry Kayak now. Um, actually, let's go back to a real one because we do need these parameters passed in or the forms confused about what membership to sell because we're using one form for all these clubs, right? And I talked to this with uh, a little bit earlier before we started. Yes, we had to recreate these forms when we migrated them from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, but it was a good opportunity to restructure the forms. And instead of having 48 web forms on their site, each with a hard-coded waiver in it, and some of them would have been different because who knows when they got updated, um, we now have four forms, one for individual, one for family, one for an add-on adult who needs to sign their own waiver, and the waiver only lives in one place. So it just helps, you know, it, sometimes it is a good idea. I'm totally freestyle. I'm 18 years or older. Okay, now I get my waiver. It's very dangerous sport, but that sounds good. I can do that. I'm okay with that. Now I can decide how many kids I want to add. And depending, if I say one, I just get one youth member, right? If I say I want two kids, I want two youth members. 
And again, this is not custom code. These are native conditions um, in, okay, where is my number of youth members? Here we go. Those are radio buttons. Those are simple radios. I'm just gonna get the group chat here. Those are radios. And then here you can see the youth member two, that field set is only gonna be visible if we have greater than or equal to, right? So this is how I can put a maximum number of contacts on the form, but all the fields for it aren't gonna be asked for until you actually say you want two kids. Um, so it, it's easy to use. And that this is one of the things I like about it. For gender, we have a write-in option. Um, so if people select the write-in option, if they select option three in CiviCRM, we made that the write-in option, then we're gonna pop up that field. Um, but yeah, that's how we store a whole bunch of stuff with one web form and, and get it all neatly categorized into the CiviCRM database for a view or something else to retrieve it, right? And to display it to an administrator or a club administrator or you know, keeping trap tabs on their membership. Um, this, this is the newest thing I discovered only like a month ago because I still learn new things every day about what Webform itself can do. Um, this is a view. So this is the acknowledgement of risk. It's the waiver for the kids. It's just a piece of content that goes into a Drupal view. And then I can add a view to a web form. So I'm adding the same view to every single web form. And it, this, this is how we make sure we don't have any issues with um, waiver discrepancies on different forms and have a single source document for it. Does that help, Greg? I, I lost my... Uh, my chat again. I'm going to try bring it back. I think I moved it to the side somewhere. So someone will have to tell me if there's more questions. I don't know. Yes, where there's one other question. Are all the automated tests done on D9 as well? Sorry, say that again. Have Are all the automated tests done on yes. Drupal yeah, 9? Look at this. We're fully testing Drupal 9 and the release candidate for CiviCRM. So if something goes wrong with the API in CiviCRM in 536, I, I already know that now. And I can tell Coleman who is working on the API and API 4 in particular, but so I'm really keen. We have all this in place now, so I can start replacing and upgrading our web form CiviCRM. I mean, we've just written it, but it's already time to upgrade all the API 3 to the API 4, um, 4 calls. and. Coleman tells me a lot of them are ready to go. So I'm going to start doing that. And as we're going to inter, you know, um, iteratively do that, every single time we make an iteration, we can evaluate the test. I just got to notice that a test failed. So that was this morning for me. Uh, Jitendra was, yeah, he put in something. Ah, interesting. So he's fixing multiple field custom fields, but somehow the test for multiple assignees in an activity failed. Now that's actually quite possible, right? Because they most both use multiple contacts. So we're gonna go and dig in and see what that was, but we would have never known that. I mean, you can write the best code you can if you don't have the automated testing. Um, I mean, my confidence level with eight and nine web form is much higher now than it even ever was with seven because I, I know the coverage we have and we have a library of tests here. And I can, I can fill this in. These are all tests for activities, for cases, for contact deduping, for relationships. Contact, submission, live payment processor testing I have in here. Uh, it actually submits a live fake visa to an IATS test server. Um, we have event testing, existing contact element testing, groups and tags, memberships. Um, and everything we do now requires a test. I'm going to be quite firm on that. You don't get to put in some code that, you know, that doesn't have a test to secure it. I'm gonna be like Eileen, I've listened to her for years and that's exactly how I feel now. Um, and that is just gonna be, it's true. 
It's true. And, I now know where she came from. I now know it because now <laughs> I'm responsible for this. So, yeah. Thank you, Karen. Um, Marcellus, do you want to speak up? I'm I see, seeing your comment here. You want to unmute yourself? Yes. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Go well, ahead. Um, I just was trying to get up and running as fast as possible. And so I started on A2 Hosting, which is one of the bigger hosting providers here in America. And so uh, I started with Drupal 8 because I want to be latest and greatest, but it was starting being fussy when I was trying to install Civi CRM. So I was like, oh no, I'm not going to deal with that. Let me just go to Drupal 7 where I know for sure it's going to work. But with that, I'm missing out on you know, these features and, you know, it's really a, a disheartening thing. So I'm just like, where do I go from here? Because I just want something that works. <laughs> you know, I don't care about the politics of it all. I just want to work. Yeah, the, the installation process of Drupal 8 is, um, is probably the hardest bit, I think, to get used to because it's different. It's not just download some software and hit install on it. Uh, you have to install it with Composer. And Composer has, I don't know, Composer is Composer. Uh, I had to learn how to use it. I still always blame it if something goes wrong. It's a Composer issue. Um, Composer 1 was terrible in terms of memory and it blew away and caused a lot of issues on shared hosting installations where you just don't have control over your memory. Uh, Composer 2 is much better and we're using it now uh, on one server uh, where we have a bunch of sites and Literally, it's done and updated things before Composer 1 had even figured out what to do about it. So it requires far fewer resources, which makes it more accessible to people. Um, and I think that will really help with deployment. So if you're starting a new project right now and you're testing it out, you should be on Drupal 9. And you should not start building anything on Drupal 7. You should, you should be on Drupal 9. Well, and I talk to you. I wish I talked to you three weeks ago because I started on Drupal 7. And well, you still, it's still going to be the same answer. I would still say if you don't have an, if you're starting a new project now, you start on Drupal 9. Um, you, there's a lot of providers in the US that could help you, right? That could maybe just get you, get consoled with them to get you set up with hosting, um, either with them or, or an environment that they're familiar with or, or get them to help you set it up. Because once you've got that going and once you've got all these tools, then what I showed you today did not require custom code. Um, so those will all just be available to you. And I, I think that's one of the greatest assets of all these integrations, right? Um, the same with the WordPress integration. If you, if you get set up, you don't have to code because that plugin, that integration, Christian's written it and those events will show up or those members will sync to users. And you know, that you don't have to then get a developer to do that for you, right? So you really do, you got to get yourself set up with the latest. Otherwise you don't do yourself a favor. Um, I mean that. Well, this was perfect today. I didn't even know that Drupal 9 was a thing. Like I thought that- Oh, it's was... a thing. We're, we're talking Drupal 10 next month about in DrupalCon. It's, it's a thing. And now I'm going to have to think about Drupal 10 and what that looks like. But they promised me seven to eight was the hardest migration code wise. So we've gotten through that. And, and my team that I work with, like we, I'm, I'm so lucky to have Matt, Matt Glamon as a resource. Like Matt is here. This is how I knew Matt. When he first said, hey, I'm Matt, do you have any cool work? I'm like, that's the guy who writes these books. That's really cool. He, he you know, if he can write the Drupal 8 cookbook. Um, so yeah, he helped us with the initial port uh, for the Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. Um, but he's not just a developer. He's, he's a really nice guy. He likes to show what he does. He teaches. So he taught me, then I taught others. Now we're all writing tests, right? So that, it, yeah, he really is an accelerator. And I'm, I'm actually really keen to get him going on the next bit. And I hope, I hope to be able to announce that next week. Um, but what I'm doing now is I'm securing all these little Lego bricks that my, my clients are using a lot. And I need to secure them with more testing. And I want to have a good basis for it, right? So that I don't have to worry about it. Um, I can't always jump in and go fix problems. There's just no more, no more time in a day, I say, and there isn't. Um, 
so yeah it's been really fun we we only work i mean i'd love to help you but we only work with clients really in canada um there's a lot a lot of canadian nonprofits, and they need us and i say no to nonprofits every day even here in calgary because we just don't have enough capacity and then they hear from other clients in calgary etc but there's a lot of providers out there that can help you and our commitment is to at least create these these bricks, right? These Lego bricks like Webform City Serum module. And of course, those can be used all over the world, right? They're not specific to our Canadian clients. Um, thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, uh, Karen and Christian. I didn't know if you wanted to say anything or share anything. You shared a lot in the Google Doc as well. Uh, yeah, no, just that. Yeah, that um, I popped popped a link to all the plugins that I that I used in that little demo site um, in the Google Doc. And yes, and and you know that ACF integration one, which um, uh, I'm going to publish there next week. Um, I think that's that's going to be really nice for people. Um, it'd be quite nice to do to do a demo on that at some stage, um, you know, for people running WordPress, I think over a million, oh, was it a million or five million sites use eight advanced custom fields, I think. Staggering number of installs for that plugin. So um, it's it's gonna be really nice for City to have um, a way of transferring data between WordPress and City via that system. But yeah, Great. thanks. Um, Thanks for the opportunity to show a few bits and bobs and thanks to Karen for spinning my head out with forms. <laughs> <laughs> You've got more ideas now. Um, yeah. Well, I barely, I barely use forms in that way, but uh, I, I can see that, that there's extraordinary things that can be done with, with that. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. I will follow up with the, all the notes from today with everyone and, uh, um, Let's continue this conversation in Mattermost and, um, you know, in, in other meetings. I, I, I think it would be great if others can organize more in-depth meetings, whether it's just on WordPress or just on Drupal, because this was such a limited time. I know there was interest in Joomla and Backdrop as well. So please, I encourage everyone to come together with others in the community and try to organize learnings for others um, around other topics as well. So thank you again. I'm just going to stop the recording.